For your last video of the year, we're going to talk about how to solve rational equations. So, so far, if you think about what we've done with rationals, we've talked about what they are, we've graphed them, we multiplied and divided them, and then we added them and subtracted them, and now we're going to solve. So the thing that's different about this versus everything else we've been doing is you are going to get an answer. And your answer isn't going to be something that's simplified. It's going to be like x equals 3. You're actually going to find a value that makes an equation work. For these guys, they weren't equations. They were expressions. So this guy is an equation. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to solve rational equations by finding the LCD. Hopefully that word's familiar or acronym. Least common denominator. And then you should be able to solve rational equations by using proportions. And this one's going to look very familiar. But now that we know how to solve quadratics, we're going to have to use that for this. So let's talk about clearing fractions. We did this way, way back in chapter 2. So it's been a very long time where I gave you something messy like this equation right here. And in order to add these, remember we need a common denominator, and that makes it really messy. So what we did instead is we cleared the fractions, or we got rid of them. So we looked at all of our denominators. We have a denominator of 3, a denominator of 2, and a denominator of 1. The lowest common denominator, or the smallest number that 3, 2, and 1 fit into, is 6. So what we did is we multiplied everything by 6. That's this right here, multiplied everything by 6. And we can see here that when we do 6 divided by 3, that just simplifies to 2. And 2 times 2x gives you 4x. 6 divided by 2 gives me 3. That's where we got 3x. And then nothing crosses off here, so we get 42. Now everyone should be able to solve an equation that looks like this guy here. And we get an answer. So let's try that with some rational expressions. So the first thing you got to do is look at all of your denominators. And it's just the denominators we care about. We have 3, 3x, and 6. You need to find the smallest thing that all of these have in common. So let's just look at numbers first. What's the smallest number they all fit into? Hopefully you said 6. And then we have to account for an any variables we have. So we have an x here. Now once we've done that, we need to go through and multiply every part of this by our LCD. So I'm just going to rewrite this here so we have a little more space. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to multiply each one of these things times 6x. Remember it's like 6x over 1 if you got to write that on there. And then we see what crosses off. So we have on the denominator here, three div or 6 divided by 3. This gives us 1 over 2. So I know this is kind of messy, but look at what we have left. We have 2 times x times 1, or just 2x. Over here, we have the x's that cross off. Those go away. And then 6 divided by 3 is just 2. So 2 times 1 gives us 2. And then here, our 6's go away, and we're just left with x. Now this red equation should be one that everybody can solve without thinking too much about it. Move all your x's to one side, so I'll subtract these guys over here. So I get negative x equals 2, and if I divide by negative 1, I get, whoa, hold on, I get x equals negative 2. Now the awesome thing about these is you can check your answer. Remember, anytime we solve something, you can check your answer, so plug it back in. Does one third plus one over three times negative two does that equal one sixth? And if you don't want to type stuff into um, or try to figure it out like by memory, you can always just type it into your calculator, and those will work out. So let's try this next one. Find your LCD. So look at your denominators. We got C, two C and 5. So let's just look at our numbers first. What's the smallest number that 2 and 5 fit into? Hopefully you said 10. And then we only have a C for both of these, so it's got to have a C in it. 
So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and each one of these guys, I'm going to multiply by 10C. Every single one of them. And we'll see what cancels out. So the C's here cancel and I'm left with 4 times 10, or 40. My C's cancel out again and 10 divided by 2 leaves me with 5, so this gives me 15. My 10 and 5 cancel to give me 2, so I get negative 2C. And then just like before, this is an awesome equation to solve. Move the 15 over, divide both sides by negative 2, you end up with negative 12.5. So that's the first type of things you'll see. The second type is going to look like this. They look a little different because there is only one fraction on each side. So here's one fraction, it equals another fraction. One fraction, it equals another fraction. Or if you go back to this one, it had fractions to add equal another one. So these ones are a little different. And the way that we can solve these is a little easier. So whenever you get something like this, we can find our cross products. So 3 times a minus 2 has to be exactly the same as 5 times a. Same rules apply regardless of what section we're in. we got to distribute this. And then we can solve. So if I subtract my 3a from both sides, I get 2a over here. Divide both sides by 2, and I get negative 3. And remember, you can check these. So do that on a test or a quiz. Is 3 divided by negative 3 the same thing as 5 divided by negative 3 minus 2? Negative 1. This gives you 5 over negative 5, which is also negative 1. I know I got the right answer. Now this problem here is as hard as they are going to get. We'll find our cross products. So I have n times n plus 1, and that equals 5 times 4, or 20. And when I distribute this, I end up with a quadratic. I cannot solve this by doing opposite operations. Instead, I have to choose one of our four methods to solve. Completing the square, quadratic formula, factoring, or square rooting. We can't use square rooting because of this guy here. So let's put it in standard form and see if we can factor. That's always my favorite. Quadratic formula is too messy. Completing the square, we'd have to cut this 1 in half, which would give me decimals, and I don't want to do that. So let's see if I can find two numbers that add to make 1 and multiply to make negative 20. And luckily, there is two numbers that do that, 4 and 5, and I've got to make the 4 negative. So this gives me n minus 4 times n plus 5. And remember, it equals 0. So using the zero product property, n minus 4 could equal 0, or n plus 5 could equal 0. So my two answers, oh, what's going on? My two answers are 4 and negative 5. Check them both. Make sure they both work. And I promise you they will. You should be able to do these two problems right here. Make a 1 underneath this. That'll make your life a little easier. Um, this one down here, you're going to have to solve using one of our four methods. So make sure you think that over. Make sure you write down any questions you have, and we can go over them together in class. Hope you enjoyed your last video. See you tomorrow.